Hi, and welcome back. When you think of digital, you tend to think of faxes and alphas and networking equipment and things like that. You don't often think of Intel servers, but digital did produce some. And this is one of them. This is the Digital Server 3200, which has got dual 300 meg Pentium 2s, 512 meg of RAM, and four SCSI hard drives. This key locks the cabinet or opens the top or the bottom doors. If we open the top door and have a look, it's just standard floppy CD. This is a CD burner that I've added. Your power, reset, and your status indicators. And inside the front door you've got comprehensive information on what the status indicators mean and the beep codes. Put the key into the third position, we can open up the whole door and this shows the hard drives. These are storage works discs already in canisters so I'm not sure whether they're hot plug or not but they're certainly a lot easier to plug in. Underneath we've got feet that fold out to keep it nice and steady. Looking at the back we've got an Ethernet card with all three systems. It's a bit like a DE450, I'm not quite sure whether it's exactly the same. Got keyboard and mouse, parallel port, video and two serial ports. The video and the SCSI controller are both on board. They're not separate cards. Yeah, there's the model information for those that are interested. This one has a single PC style power supply but it looks like there's space for a second one over here. Okay, let's have a look inside. To open it up, there's a couple of thumb screws at the front. Then you just slide it off. Standard power supply, nothing too exciting about that. And your removable media bays are up the top. There's two processors in here. One here and one at the back. Their heat, with their heat sinks facing each other. Memory slots here, they must be 128 meg DIMMs because there's 512 meg worth. Two voltage regulators here, one for each CPU. This is the Ethernet board in its own dedicated slot. The graphics chip here. And just to prove that it's a real digital board, there's a digital chip in here. It doesn't look very much like an Ethernet chip. Uh, the traces seem to be going up to that Ethernet connector. Moving further down, you can see that we've got three PCI slots. One's occupied by a network card, and five ESA slots. This is part of the motherboard chipset and the Dallas battery for the clock. It's flat, but at least those things don't leak. And we'll attempt to get the CPU card out. And just remove this and the whole thing should slide out. And now the CPU card's out, you can see the SCSI chip. And here's the CPU board out of the server. Having it on a separate board's good because you can uh, do all your memory upgrades and CPU changes and things like that very easily. And before we put the cover back on, I'll just show you that this has got the standard um, quick reference guide for, that you see on most servers. So lots of information there. You don't need to go hunting through the manuals to find out what all the dip switches do. Time to power it up. Yeah, SCSI drives, CDs, and 
and from here on in it's fairly boring just normal windows after resetting a forgotten password I can now log in storage it's only showing a single CPU but I don't think I've got the multi-processor kernel loaded so that's probably why and 512 mega RAM these are four 9 gig hard drives I'm not using through them these machines don't look like much these days, but um, in the mid 90s, um, two processors was quite good. I also tried changing the hard drive, and they appear to be hot swap. Anyway, that's it for today. I hope you found that interesting, and we'll catch you next time.